Hello one and welcome back to another Daily Geometry Dash video and today I am going to be showing you how to use the move trigger in Geometry Dash 2.2074. So for new creators, uh, the move trigger is one of the first things you're going to want to learn and it's going to be the first thing that might actually, you know, cause you to work a little bit as these are quite, mm, these are quite the options, you know. As the first trigger that you're supposed to learn, it is quite complicated. But we are going to go through most of these options in this video, and we are going to show you what they do. So, the first thing you are going to want to do with the move trigger is set a target group ID. This is the most important step. So, for example, if I have a target group ID of 1, and I have a block right up here that has a group ID of 1, you just click add and I just play, you will see nothing is going to happen. And that is for a very simple reason. That is because we haven't given the move trigger anything to do. So let's say I do lock to player X, right? For 10 seconds. If I jump, the cube jumps. If I go back to the move trigger, and do the same thing but for lock to player X, because I did it for Y before, It'll just start moving forward the moment I pass the trigger line. So you can modify when it starts moving. And for a of that, you can modify how far away it will be from you. So, if I do that, and I just add a, another movement. As you can see, we can now jump on top of the block while it goes upwards. So... Those are the very basics out of the way. Now we are going to go over how this works. So, the movements themselves are a bit weird. They're a bit counterintuitive. So, for example, if I wanted to move up by one block, right, you'll see it doesn't work. And it's not because it's behind the line. It just doesn't work. That is because it's moving up one step. And a step is actually one of these. There we go. That's a step. That is a step. Both those are valid steps. So what you're going to want to do is just change this to 10. Because 10 steps equal one block. And you're going to want to change the move time. You know, so you can actually get under it. Now it's instant. And as you can see. Now I can get under the block, or I can jump over the block, you know, I can do anything I want with a block. Now, we are going to add another thing on top of it. It's going to be this. There we go. So now, the block teleports away, and you can jump on it when it gets here. You can also change the move time now. So for example, if I wanted to have the block move into position, you just have that. There we go. So that is, you know, the basic movement. You can lock to other stuff as well, you can change it to small steps, but all of those are pretty self-explanatory. Now we're going to get into easings. So for example, if I had a 0.89 move time movement, and I add ease in out, and I do 10 on both of them, so it's just going to go up one and to the side one, you'll see it will slowly speed up to actually work. It will, it will start out slow, and then it will speed up to its maximum size around halfway, in, in this case, of the movement. And then it is going to slow down again to reach the final position. So those that is what easing does. There are a bunch of different easing types, like ease in, where it doesn't do the same thing for, you know, it going away. I'm just going to be locking the player X just so you can actually like, see it properly. And I'm going to be doing ease out. You know, here it only does the easing on the out movement. Here we have uh, elastic in out. This one is just, you know, rubber bandy. Next, we have elastic in, where it just does, you know, the in el elastically, you know, just like that. There we go. Next, we have elastic out, which is the same thing. Next, we have 
bounce in out. So as you can see, it bounces in. And if we go over here, we have bounce in. And then, of course, we'll have bounce out as well. There we go. And exponential in out. No, it gets exponentially faster. An exponential in. There we go. We also need exponential out. You know, there's quite a lot of different ones to go with. Those are just basically styles of movement, whichever one you want to go for will be okay to go for. And uh, yeah, that is basically everything you can do with the move trigger in Geometry Dash 2.207. Except there is one last thing, which is the touch trigger. So now it will only move if you touch the move trigger itself. And uh, yeah, that is how to use the move trigger in Geometry Dash 2.2074. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to see more videos just like this one. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!